Tonight we're going to continue with our media availabilities in advance of tomorrow's Brantley Gilbert Big Machine Brickyard 400. We are joined by our most recent race winner, Denny Hamlin, driver of the number 11 FedEx Cares Toyota. Um, Denny, you have a pretty special paint scheme out there, and obviously it's very fast. You just fled the first practice today. It's a paint scheme you designed with a 22-year FedEx Indianapolis-based team member, Rachie Powell. Uh, why don't you tell us about it? You guys unveiled it at a really cool event uh, the other day here. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, she's a local member here, and like I said, she donates a lot of her time. Uh, Rishi came to Charlotte a few months ago and um, helped the creative designer who does our normal paint scheme to myself uh, come up with something that she liked and, and everything. And so uh, it turned out great and obviously uh, very fast, and we just hope to continue that uh, on for the rest of the day and tomorrow. Awesome. We'll open up to questions for Denny. Please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. Do we have any questions for Denny up here? Um, Denny Megan with You and Wish TV Indianapolis. Um, just this is one of the biggest races on your series. How special is it to be here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway? Uh, it's great. I mean, we love coming here. It's you know, m probably being one time a year is is good because you know it it feels prestigious uh, to us. We know that every time we come here, it's a it's a very big event. Um, it's still the second biggest race of the year. Uh, for the NASCAR Cup Series, so uh, yeah, it, we we always want to perform well. Um, you know, this track's been pretty good to me personally uh, throughout my career. So you know, we we like coming here, and it's uh, you know it's going to be interesting to see how the weekend plays out with the stages. I think that it'll definitely be a different race than what we've seen in the past year, where one car can kind of just check out and lead all the laps. I don't see that is necessarily being. Uh, the case this weekend simply because there will be so many strategies that uh, could be played out. And Kyle Busch spoke yesterday to how hard it is to pass here. How is that going to affect strategy headed into the race? Well, it's it's the reason we spent most of the first practice in qualifying trim. I think that qualifying is a very big key. If you look at the winners here, most of them have started up front. So it's important to start your day off being fast and being um, up there in qualifying. So that's where we focused today. Uh, in the next practice, we'll focus on race trim. So we're, uh, we're, we know it's very hard to pass here. It always has been. Um, but it just seems like here in the last three, four years, it's been very difficult. So uh, the good news is, is that you know, those stages, though, will break things up and it'll allow guys running in the middle of the pack to stay out or pit uh, and take tires and, and make a charge through the field. Uh, Denny, Eric Smith, Race Review Online. I saw a stat from NASCAR this past week that, um, obviously last week was your 30th win, that all non-active drivers that are Hall of Fame eligible are in the Hall of Fame. Obviously, that's probably your ultimate goal, and you still have 20 years left. But with the win here, if, if you could win here at the Brickyard to go on to Daytona 500 win, is that something you think about, that you want to win this even more to go on with that? Yeah, I mean, there's two major events. I feel like you know we haven't won the Coke 600 and the Brickyard 400. So if I can get those two, um, it would it'd be a, a wrap on all the big races in, in NASCAR. Um, obviously, uh, the Hall of Fame's, in my opinion, bigger than any championship. Uh, it's the ultimate goal. It's why you play the sport that you're in, is, is to reach the highest level. Um, and the championship is the highest level for one year. Uh, the Hall of Fame is the highest level for the, your entire career. So I think that, uh, yeah, that's an ultimate goal. That's why, why we're all out here, and we're going to just keep trying to win races. And um, maybe when it's all said and done, it, it gets considered. We'll go to Reed and then Zach. Uh, Reed Smith with NASCAR Wire Service. Coming off the win last week in New Hampshire, your fastest here in practice. Do you feel like you guys have turned the corner at this point? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, I think the next practice will be a very good indication uh, as other guys switch into qualifying mode where we kind of go into race mode. Uh, so we, we'll probably be pretty low on the speed charts next practice. Uh, I wouldn't read too much into today so far. But, yeah, it looked like all of our cars were pretty fast, uh, even besides us today, uh, 78 and 20 and 18. So, yeah, I'm pretty confident that um, we have turned the corner uh, and we've just got a little bit more to go. Go to Zach and then Kelly. Zach with Hands Ready Punch Dutch. Um, how are you going to be watching the Xfinity race today? Um, I know Elliot Sadler, um, he's pretty happy with the aero ducts in the front of the car, and he thinks that it could be a good idea for Cup um, possibly next year. So how are you going to be watching that race, maybe um, 
Are you going to have some pretty good thoughts about that if it goes well? I'll be watching it from a streaming app because I'll be golfing uh, is how I'll be watching it. Uh, but I, yeah, we will be for sure watching in interest to see whether someone from a far back position can make a move and pass. Uh, I think that you know the Xfinity cars absolutely needed to try something different here uh, to try to you know, spice up the racing. And yeah, I, I, I'm looking, I hope it puts on an amazing show. I really do. Um, and yeah, I'd be willing to try whatever in the Cup Series going forward at this racetrack. Whatever will put on a good race, uh, I'm all up for. Kelly? Kelly Crandall, racer.com. Denny, um, Kyle and Adam Stevens have obviously found something here the last couple of years. Is that something they have shared with the rest of the company uh, this time around? Yeah, I think, you know, where they've really been successful is they've qualified well. Um, they've qualified well, and we've talked about how hard it was to pass. Nobody's just been able to pass. And, um, you know, there's been times where I feel like we were equal to him last year. Um, we were second for most of the day, second or third, and uh, but just could not, couldn't overcome the arrow side of things. Where I think today or tomorrow with the stages, you're just not going to be able to go out there and lead all the laps. I, I don't know that qualifying will be as important, but it for sure will be uh, a factor that plays into who wins this race. And second is you just mentioned uh, all the majors uh, capturing the, the majors. How much do you think about that in terms of? wanting to put all of those races on your resume? Uh, a lot. I mean, it's definitely something that uh, I'm focused on is, is trying to get all those races won. Um, you know, all races are important, but it just seems like there's, you know, a handful that are a little bit more special. Uh, and we've, we've, we've won our fair share, um, but we definitely would like to, you know, win them all. Yeah. Uh, Dick Mepman, the five and gold timer. Well, uh, you continually mention uh, hard to pass. How does this track differ from the other big tracks mm -hmm. that makes it so difficult to pass? Uh, there's one lane. Uh, that's it, it's you know a true one lane racetrack. Uh, at, when we go anywhere else, uh, besides maybe Martinsville, um, it's it's the only one lane racetrack we have on on our circuit. Um, you can't come off the bottom here. You can't come off that line, or else you'll it's a detriment. Uh, you see guys get hung on the outside line here on restarts, not be able to get down and, and just lose a tremendous amount of spots. So on the other mile and a half to two mile racetracks, um, we have room to move around. Um, and, and one line is not a detriment where here you have to be in one line or else um, you're in trouble. And the problem with that is that uh, if, if everyone runs at one line, how do you get around the cars because it's such a big aero deficit? So that's where the challenge comes from here. Go to Jordan. Jordan Bianchi, SB Nation. Uh, Danny, you look at Joe Gibbs Racing. Last year, regular season, you guys were dominant. And then the playoffs, it seemed like everyone else kind of caught up, maybe even surpassed you a little bit. But this year, it seems like maybe the trend is different. Is that a fair assessment? And come the playoffs, do you feel confident that you guys are going to be peaking at the right time? You know, we try to every year. I mean, it just seems like for whatever reason, uh, last year and the year before, we, we were strong right from the get-go. I'm not sure why it's taking a little bit longer this year. Uh, I know that we always try to get better as the year goes on, as does every team. Uh, but it just seemed like a few other teams just uh, in the off season just got magically better. And it's not magically. It's because they worked real hard. Um, but it's, it just uh, it, it overcame any advantage that we had. Uh, last year in the chase, I felt like, yeah, you know, Hendrick had caught up. There was a lot of teams that had caught up to us and even maybe surpassed us. Um, but, you know, that trend kind of continued, I felt like, over the off season and the start of this season where we were then playing catch up. We weren't on, a, we weren't on that level playing field anymore. And now we've closed that gap back up to them. It's just a, it's a cycle that just keeps going back and forth every year. We'll go to Jerry and then to Woody. Jerry Jordan, kicking the tires out of that in here. Unless somebody hacked your Twitter account the other night, you were talking about why, you know, when fans were saying, hey, we need to go back to these tracks and this. Can you explain the infrastructure debate that you were, you were talking about and the, and the specifics of, of why we can't do certain things that people would, may want or love to do? Yeah, I mean, I wish that we could go back to Wilkesboro and uh, Wilkesboro and Rockingham and all that. That'd be great for me. I'd love to. Uh, but it's just not, I don't think it's just feasible in, in today's. NASCAR, I think that uh, 
you know, the truck series carries one, uh, you know, a certain amount of circus to it. You know, all you know, the haulers, the everything that gets set up, right? You know, it has to have a certain amount of garages. You know, this, that, and the other. But the Cup Series is like times ten, so it's just it would be tough, as much as the Cup Series has grown, to bring that traveling circus to some short track somewhere and then be able to put on a show that makes sense or is organized. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure does Eldor have time and scoring loops or not. Probably not. Uh, so, you know, when it gets down to the nitty gritty of these cup races and we're arguing over, you know, who is leading at the line at this point or that point, like, how does that work on a track that doesn't, you know, have, you know, scoring loops? You know, and, and I know Wilkesboro probably doesn't. So that's what I mean by infrastructure. And, you know, I don't, it, it's tough to, um, you know, get these sponsors to, to come to the racetracks uh, unless their amenities are about like uh, here or Daytona. So <laughs> it's, you want to you wanna have really nice everything. Uh, and, and it seems like, you know, just some of those old tracks got phased out because they were antiquated. So uh, I like seeing the, the new updates to like the tracks like Richmond. I mean, that's state of the art. It's going to bring a lot of new eyes and hopefully sponsors to those types of racetracks. Uh, so that's the direction we need to be he heading. I don't think that we need to be heading backwards. Let's head forward and, and make the facilities that we have better. Woody came with MRN. Denny, speaking of other tracks, go back to Pocono next week where you've won four times already. And there's a theory that if you can do well here, you can also do well there. Are you a subscriber to that theory? Why or why not? At Pocono? Yeah. Yeah, I think the two relate. Um, they certainly have for many, many years. Um, but I think that uh, this is almost an, its own animal. It really is. Uh, Pocono is, is, is a challenging track in itself, but um, it, the results don't directly equate back. Um, they're shifting there at Pocono, and I think that changes things quite a bit versus where you're at here at Indy, you don't. Um, so, it, yeah, there's similarities, and you'll run a setup that's fairly close, but I think the shifting aspect of it changes more than people give it give it credit for. All right, Denny, thanks for joining us this afternoon and good luck tomorrow Thank in the you. race.